Welcome to Wikipedia World. We're going to discuss today about pollination. And pollination, we're going to divide this by three videos. The first video, we're going to discuss about the self pollination. And the second one, we have the cross pollination. And the last one, we have the agent for pollination. For this time, let's define first what is pollination. When you say pollination, that is the act of transferring pollen grains from the male anther of a flower to the female stigma. It also pollination usually goal of every living organism, including plants, is to create offspring for the next generation. So let's discuss now for the self-pollination. When you see self-pollination, the plant can fertilize itself. It occurs when pollen from the one flower's pollinates the same flower or other flowers of the same individual. And it is that uh, even though it is have evolved under conditions when the pollinators were not reliable vectors for pollen transport and is most often seen in short life on one species and plants that colonize new locations. Cell pollination may include autogamy, where pollen is transferred to the female part of the same flower or geotonogamy when pollen is transferred to another flower on the same plant. Plants adapted to self-fertilize often have similar stamen and carpal lens and plants that can be pollinated themselves and produce viable offsprings are called self-fertile. Plants that cannot fertilize themselves are called self-sterile, a condition which mandates cross-pollination for production of offsprings. Self-pollinating species can reproduce even if animal pollinators are not present. However, reproduction through self-pollination reduces genetic diversity. So it's you can see in the picture, this is for the self pollination from itself, it going down to its female part of the flower. Both hermaphrodite and monoecious species have the potential for self pollination leading to self fertilization unless there is a mechanism to avoid it. 80% of flowering plants are hermaphrodic meaning they contain both sexes in the same flower, while 5% of plant species are monoecious, which is the remaining 15% would therefore be dioecious and each plant unisex one. We have here the advantage and disadvantage of self-pollination. For the disadvantage of self-pollination, it's come from a lack of variation that allows no adoption to the changing environment or potential pathogen attack. Self-pollination can lead to inbreeding depression or the reduced health of the species. Due to the breeding of their latent specimens, this is why many flowers that could potentially self-pollinate have a built-in mechanism to avoid it or make it second choice at best. Genetic defects in self-pollinating plants cannot be eliminated by genetic recombination, and offspring can only avoid inheriting the deleterious attributes through a change mutation arising in the gemmate. For advantage, there are several advantages actually in terms of self-pollinating flowers. If a given genotype is well suited for an environment, cell pollination helps to keep this trait stable in the species. Not being dependent on pollinating agent allows self pollination to occur when bees and wind are now here to be found. And self pollination can be an advantage when the number of flowers are small or widely spaced. So, thank you for listening to Pedia World. This is Miss Kara. Hope you're going to watch the part two of this video.